Hello everyone and welcome to the Little Blue Fly. In today's video we are now part two of a three-part series where um, I am restoring and refreshing our sunroom um, here at our 83 year old stone cottage. Today I will be focusing on the door, um, also on the windows with the cafe curtains, and I have a couple um, new decor pieces, actually vintage um, pieces that I would like to share with you all today as well. Um, I only posted one video this last week and it's because I've been very sick. I'm not quite sure what's going on here, but it just doesn't feel good. Very sinus very in the chest um but we'll just I'm, I'm trying my best to get through it um my next video we will be i will be wrapping things up um because it is a three-part series and i thought since i'm just posting once a week we're gonna go ahead and have a fabulous decorating marathon here in the sunroom but before that happens, I will be sharing a decor haul. So for those of you that have not subscribed yet, I invite you to subscribe to The Little Blue Fly and also go and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. So that being said, let's begin, shall we? Okay, so this door is just a mess everywhere, all around it. Um, the caulking that they placed up here, um, the door itself is absolutely, em it, it's just embarrassing. It's filthy. Look at this. And then right in here, it almost looks like if a bear was trying to claw its way into the house. Now this sunroom is definitely an add-on. So I thought, and some of this is, I started scrubbing right here is what i was doing on the stone so it was coming up onto the door but i was trying to get off some of this caulking and just forget it i'm not even going to try to remove it instead next video i will be sharing how i am going to be painting over it and making it look like the stone at least i'm going to try we'll see how well that works out <laughs> So I'm going with this putty right here. I love it because it starts off pink, right? And when it dries, it turns white. So it's spackling. So I, I just want to fill in those holes a little bit because that's just a bit much. Um, okay, sorry about that. I don't know if you heard that or not, but I started going into a... A coughing fit again so I had to mute and pause a little bit okay so here is um, it looks like weather stripping here all metal I have all the holes filled in but when I looked closer at this metal it was really looking like copper so we'll see what happens there so <clears throat> sorry I'm just going to use this sanding block to um, really smooth things out here before I start to paint <clears throat> it's gonna be something else trying to get through this video with this this cough oh my goodness it won't go away it's horrible okay so I have excuse all that filth over there but um so everything filled in nicely sanded everything down it's nice and smooth those splatters are from when I was scrubbing on the stone to try to get off that caulking I'm gonna go ahead and try to clean up that hardware a little bit and then this is all smoothed out on this side as well. So we'll see. I'm going to put some citrus strip on this piece. And look, I do. I believe this is copper underneath here. I mean, this house, it just, 
it just keeps giving the, these uh, little special surprises, you know, the window and the sunroom and now this copper. I'm going to try everything I can to restore this copper stripping. I actually will be doing quite a bit of stripping on this door, the part that's on the inside in the living room. Okay, so here is the miracle worker here, Citrus Strip. I actually use this, um, for those of you that have not watched um, the video where I stripped my stone fireplace because um, they decided to do a German schmear on it. Um, again, I can understand that being done on a brick, but a gorgeous stone, that just confused me a little bit there. But anyhow, you just place on this gel and it just works its magic. It's not, um, I either purchased this from Home Depot or Lowe's. It doesn't have strong fumes to it at all. It's really easy to work with. Just put a generous amount onto the surface that you are wanting to strip. And I probably let it sit um, about 20 minutes to a half an hour. <clears throat> You'll see it, it starts to actually bubble up. Excuse, excuse me, I'm having to drink water because I get this tickle in the back of my throat. <clears throat> I'm also over here with a cough drop, so my apologies. So let's see. I'm hoping that this works. And look, it's just the paint just is coming right off of this metal piece. Citrus strip is really easy to work with. I just applied some more down here at the bottom. I will be going through the whole inside of the door frame. Okay, here we go. Let's see how this works. See, it just is going to slide right off. So if you have any of those projects where you're wanting to strip paint, this, this is a good one right here. I'm just going to go ahead and wipe down and look at that. Now they have these nails that of course they had to use to hold this piece of metal on. I don't know. I tried using this brush. It was a no-go. You know, it's really trial and error, you know, when you are going to strip something off of a surface, what is going to work and what is not. Took it off a little bit around the nails. But I tend to be kind of a perfectionist and on certain projects. So we'll see how I'm going to get the rest of the paint off of this piece of metal. But as you can see, it just really is lift. The paint is lifting right off from the metal. And that right there the the wood right next to it i have to completely strip that as well and i'll be sharing with you why here in just a little bit so 
So see some pieces, you know, are staying behind. So I also decided to use, um, I'm not sure if I, again, I've been sick, so I'm not sure if it's going to come up here or not, but I did use a putty knife as well. And that worked absolute wonders on stripping this piece. But what do you guys think? Do you think that we have copper here? I do. <laughs> I really do. So I'm just going to continue to work around. I just wanted to share um, a couple areas with you so you could see um, how wonderfully this product works. You know, stripping paint, this really takes some time and patience for sure. Okay, now I'm also, you see quite a bit of paint chunks in here, but I need to make sure that all the paint comes off from the inside as well and to be really careful to not damage the wood. I mean, stripping, again, it just, it takes patience. I was speaking with my son, Cody, and he says, Mama, he said, just go buy new wood. And I'm like, no, son, I, I just, I want to keep the original pieces to the house in here. I don't mind, and you know, also save money, right? Repurpose. And he said, I would just take it off, mom. So it removed very well right here on the inside. <clears throat> Excuse me. The hardware I will be cleaning this as well so it's something how when we get into a project right we don't really I mean at least me I don't really understand um, the depths of everything you know I, I get into something and then there ends up being like four other steps that I have to take in order to achieve what it is I'm trying to achieve Again, patience, time and patience. Now the inside of the door frame, I will be painting that, the wider part. But on this side, I will be stripping down to the wood. And for the most part, um, the, all of the paint is coming off from this metal piece. I'm excited to see how this cleans up. So as you can see, I just have a little bit of varnish left on this trim here. I mean, this wood is really in great condition for its age. I'm going to take a little bit of, um, I will be sharing the bottle. I think it's called Mr. Metal. Yep, here it is. Where did I purchase it? I have no idea. I do not remember. But look, we have brass. I mean, I'm sorry, not brass, copper. Absolutely gorgeous. I am loving this. When I get the sunroom side painted and then this, the inside where the living room is at, 
um, all stripped and restained, and I plan on putting um, you know a poly on it. This brass is just going to stand out and look. Why do I keep calling it brass? It's copper. Because I'm sick? I don't know. <laughs> but anyhow, it is so going to stand out. So I placed on just one application of the citrus strip and using um, Mr. Metal just one time. And look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. You never know what you're going to find when you start, you know, removing items from an old home. Okay, so I have everything taped off, trying to protect the stone. I have painted on the trim. Um, the paint I'm using is the same color in the sunroom, Fresh Bread, from Sherwin-Williams. And again, I'll make sure to link at the very end of this video, you'll see um, two other videos placed there. Um, just click on the first one and that will be the video where I actually painted the walls and the ceiling here in the sunroom and I share the paint um, color and the brand. And I will be using, um, actually applying two coats of the Sherwin-Williams paint. I wanted this room um, just to really have a nice glow to it, whether the day um, has sunshine or not. But I'm so happy to finally, to, to be going over all of this dingy, dirty paint. <laughs> There's nothing like putting a fresh coat of paint on something, right? It's like getting, um, getting a new outfit. big difference and again this is the first coat the second coat it will really start to warm up I decided to go ahead and use my purdy brush but then I will roll over um, just one time to make sure that all of the paint is even Okay, so I wanted to share the difference. Bottom part, dirty, dingy, nasty. And then the top portion, just so fresh. We don't have any sunshine today. It's just, it's been very cloudy here in Virginia lately. You can see our sweet little goose over there to the side, which we will be choosing a name here soon. Okay, so all of the trim has been painted, and now I will be painting um, the flat part of the door. I went around all of the little panes. And here it is finished. I have all of the tape off. Put the hardware on and I actually had my husband put on one of the old crystal doorknobs that was here in the house from another door. And the color's just so fresh in this room. I'm 
very excited to when when I can get this for when I can get this um the other putty around the door taken off. So here we have a mess and I'm going to share with you the importance of ironing the linens. They just look all droopy and saggy and here we go all crisp and fresh and clean they've been pressed and see look here it's all drab and sad and messy and and depressing <laughs> maybe it's just me because i'm sick i don't know and then over here it's all fresh and nicely pressed now, as you can see, cloudy day, but you know, that's okay. I'm going to put my hands in some soil now, like I used to have my mother do in January and February when she would get all sad because it was so cloudy, there was no sun. Um, I will be using organic potting mix and then also this mix that's used for orchids because it has moss and... Um, different types of moss in it and lava rocks and it just makes for good um, drainage and ivy likes that i will be using needlepoint ivy i have a couple terracotta pots here <laughs> you'll see in a minute they don't even match that's what happens when you go shopping for pots when you don't feel good as you can see, one is much lower than the other. But, you know, I think this is going to work out. It's one of those um, mistakes that we make that actually turns out being a good thing. I have a couple trays that I will be placing at the bottom. I decided I wanted to use terracotta, you know, to try to, you know, when you work in the and the clay pots, you know, it is kind of keeping things, you know, to the natural way, the, the way plants like it. But as you can see, the goodness right here, we have different types of moss and some lava rocks in here. And we're going to have some good drainage going here in the pots. So what I'm going to do is a third of my pot is going to be this um, lava rock and moss mixture. And then the other two thirds will be the potting mix. So I'm just going to add some of this at the bottom, the moss and, and the rocks, and then place the potting mix in and just blend it a little bit. But, ah, oh, look, oh, this, you know, even though I'm wearing a glove, just the smell of this soil is just um, bringing life into my sick lungs right now. I'm just going to mix things in here a little bit. But yes, I, I know I've shared this story before, but my mother, she would get so sad and depressed and in January and February, because in the Central Valley in California, um, January and February, we rarely see the sunshine. It just has a thick layer of fog going all across the valley floor. So I would have my mother, she would call me up, oh, baby, I'm so sad. And so I would have my mother take me with her outside and I'd have her put her hands in the soil to help her feel much better and it worked every time so here i i'm not feeling all that well today and i thought well you know what bev let's do what we would have mom always do let's get our hands up in some earth and plant a, a couple ivy plants and you know it really did make me feel you know a little bit better Now these ivy plants, I do not have the forms as of yet, but when I am finished with them, they will be topiaries. I just really felt like getting my hands in the earth today. We were actually supposed to be sunny here, but that didn't happen. Mm. 
So as you can see, I would use some of the rocks and the moss and then add in some of the soil. And here we have the Needlepoint Ivy. To me, it is the best ivy to work with when um, we make topiaries. You know, it has it's smaller. Some of those ivy leaves, they can get quite large. But the Needlepoint, this one, it, it tends to stay a nice size. So I'm going to place one to the left and then the other to the right. These are in great shape. I went to, um, oh gosh, I don't remember if it was Lowe's or Home Depot and they just had one. And when I went to touch the ivy, all the leaves were just falling off. I said, oh baby, you are not happy at all. So I decided to go to Maryfield Garden and pick up some ivy there. It is a private nursery, so you do pay a little bit more, but you get what you pay for when you go to private nurseries, for sure. It's just a different grade of, um, of ivy. It's going to be so happy and grow well. And before we know it, we're going to have a beautiful topiary here in the sunroom. <clears throat> and for those of you that, you know, might be tired of all the cloudiness and the cold weather, I hope that um, by me letting, not having this go fast, but... Just letting you see me play inside of the soil and look at the new growth and the and the ivy and plant things. I I hope it um, brought some some peace to you, some some calm on these cold and cloudy days. And I would love to suggest for those of you that are able to maybe go go purchase yourself a little um, small plant from the nursery or, or pull something up from your garden if it's there and just plant it inside a pot in your home um, where it is a lot warmer than outside. I'm so happy. <laughs> I love working with Ivy and making new topiaries. And my other ones, they just didn't, you'll see in um, the next couple videos, they just didn't fare well this winter. Now we're going to give them a little bit of water. Normally, I like to um, wet my cells before I plant them, um, but that's fine. It, it's, it's going to work well this way as well. I'm making a nice mess on top of this table, and I don't even care. <laughs> I'll, I'll deal with it later. Look at all that wonderful new growth right there. It doesn't take long for ivy to grow inside the home. Not here in Virginia, anyhow.
Okay, so the pots are, are planted. I cleaned up all of my mess I made. And now I would like to share this beautiful piece I just thrifted. Um, this piece actually came from Spain. The party I purchased this from, um, it was his mother's. Um, she has passed and it just doesn't work for them. And it does for me, so... I decided to purchase a couple of these from him. Uh, they traveled all, all over the world. They were in the military. And he still remembers when she purchased these when they were in Spain. There's a little crack, it seems like, right? A little hairline there at the bottom, but that's okay. Because nothing's going directly in that pot. So as you can see, this is the great surprise. This terracotta pot comes up and out, which I love. Um, I think it looks gorgeous um, with the blue and white. And the other one just really goes down in. Now I also will be adding in a couple other things, but that will be the decorating marathon video. For today, um, I'll be placing just one other little thing in there. But look, this came with the pot as well. A gorgeous stand. Uh, I mean, oh, I absolutely love these pieces. This stands about 19 inches tall. It's in excellent condition. It has just one little, little nick right here at the end, but that is okay. So again, these can be placed on a table. They can go on the floor um, because they're very tall. It's all about finding those new treasures out there. Actually, these are vintage, but new vintage treasures. How about that? <laughs> So I have one down at the bottom. I'm sure this is things are going to change. And then I placed one up at top on the stand. Absolutely loving these new pieces and so excited for this marathon. Now, for those of you that have not subscribed, I do invite you right now to subscribe to The Little Blue Fly. Make sure to hit that like button if you have enjoyed this video. I'm going to place in these candle picks. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. These were purchased from Hobby Lobby. Make sure your notification bells are on because, again, I have this fabulous, and I mean... OMG gorgeous um, uh, decorating haul coming up. Uh, I mean, decor haul coming up. Um, many vintage pieces with new pieces. Um, I, I'm just, what can I say? I'm excited about being able to share it. I can't even think right. So I just placed the candle in um, this one little taper holder. These are great to use when you're working with plants. Just place it right in. Here is the window. So we are going again, decorating hall, fabulous decorating hall. Then we're going to finish up the series and the video following the hall. We will be the this window will be completed that wood on the other side that is a false wall that will come out we will be able to see from the sunroom into the living room and we are going to have a fabulous decorating marathon and thank you so much for leaving all the likes last video it really helped
Thank you.